Thank you to our sponsors, All Day Disc Golf and Grip.com. Welcome everyone to part two of the female junior 15 and under coverage of the SeaTac Tree Smack. I'm Rachel Melnick here with Sierra, aka CC Crusher. Hello. On the card today, uh, we have the 15 and under junior girls. Uh, we have. Oh, there's their smiling faces. We have Shire Sane, Sierra Griffiths, and Olivia Scott. Okay, so I believe we are starting on hole 10. Hole 10 is a 282-foot par 3. Uh, this one is another one of my favorites. Um, you just want to throw straight down the middle. Uh, you can kind of see the basket behind that tree there. But where Sierra landed is a good spot to land. Do you remember what you threw there? I threw a mantis. A mantis. A little bit turned over from Olivia, but it looks like it kicked back out into the middle for her. And then that will, will be a good placement for Olivia too. Or Shia, my bad. <laughs> Look at that sidearm! <laughs> A little bit of grip lock there, right? <laughs> yeah. It happens to the best of us. I thought that was going in. Yeah. Look at that focus and determination. Uh -huh. <laughs> and it didn't go in? Yeah. Uh, those are the heartbreakers when you're like, I'm completely focused and completely on par, and then you just hit the bottom of the basket. <laughs> or with a birdie. Yeah. Just some cleanup putts here from the rest of the girls. Hole 11 is a 401 foot par 3. A uh, basket is just down there, slightly dog leg left. Come back. Oh, that will be fine. <laughs> oh, and she crushes the upshot. It was a pretty nice, that was a pretty nice drive. And I remember, this is when I had bangs. <laughs> you don't have bangs anymore? Well, they're all grown out now. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm actually thinking about growing my hair out. But I haven't had, I ha haven't had bangs since I was in like, middle school. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually thinking about bringing them back. <laughs> <laughs> they kind of are. That was a nice upshot from where she was. Could have been a lot tougher. We've all had those days where we're like, oh, let's just let the disc out early. <laughs> <laughs> I was so excited, I think, that it just went too fast. Oh, and then she's hitting the top of the basket. 
That's like first the two. The, Sorry. First it was the top. I mean, first it was the bottom, but now it's the top I hit. Yeah. There's... And now we're back to the bottom. Sorry. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's totally okay. <laughs> Just how it goes sometimes. And honestly, I've learned very early on if I don't laugh at myself, especially when I'm in those situations where I'm hitting everywhere but the basket, like the middle of the chains, I just, I have to laugh it off. Yeah, I'm, I sometimes laugh at my shots when I'm having like a good day, but when I'm having like a bad day on the course on a tournament, I just totally just start like not talking to no one. Um, if I have like a, another bad hole, I start like crying. And that's okay. Yeah, because I sometimes I think highly of myself in tournaments, and then when I just like have a downfall on a hole, it's just it's, I think that I'm over. Like With, like the tournament. Yeah, I lost it. Yeah, I can see that, and it it does take a while of playing tournaments before you just remind yourself that you're not really playing against the girls on the hole on your card, um, you're really just playing against the course. And once you get out of the mindset of being so down and hard on yourself, you'll be able to uh, change that and just go out there and have fun and laugh at those errant shots. Um, because honestly, you know, the first goal of this should be fun. And when we take away those moments where we're where we're having fun, that's when our mental game goes down, too. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. That's why I figured figured out fairly early on, the more I laugh at my errant shots, the more I just... it, The more it just rolls off of me, and it doesn't affect me as much. But it's definitely a learning curve, I mean... Being hard on yourself is a really common thing for a lot of golfers and I believe a lot of people throughout their life. A really big thing is this golf too is your mental game. Because you don't want to go on a course and just start yelling if you just have like a bad shot or hit a tree. Yeah. Okay, sorry, I forgot to introduce this hole. This hole is uh, hole 12, it's a 367 foot par 3. Um, this is another one of my... I like this course. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> I like a lot of this course even though it doesn't like me. It just... This course provides some really cool shots and some really cool holes that you don't find much anywhere else. Who put uh -huh. that dead tree there? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Oh, that... It's in the bushes, but I, I do believe she'll be fine from there. Oh, it's in the bush. I think it's always funny when, like, a disc is, like, in the tree or in the... or in a bush. Why do you think it's funny? I don't know, because I'm so used to having the disc on the ground, but when it just, like, <laughs> is on top of a tree, it's just funny to me. <laughs> That's the point where you're... you're happy you have tall friends on the card with you. <laughs> yeah. I don't have to do anything. I just have to sit back and watch it. Right? I mean, I, I'm not one to talk. I'm only five foot tall, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so one of these days, you probably will pass me in height. <laughs> I, I, I'm pretty small, but I've grown a lot in quarantine. Well, 
if this any if this isn't any, any indication, Sierra, I have two older or two younger half sisters who are both taller than me. One is 18 and one is 15. So I've come to terms with it. <laughs> okay. Sidetrack, sorry. Hole 13 is a 425 foot par 3. Um, this one plays uh, straight down the middle with the right hand with the basket being a dog leg right. Do you remember what you threw here? Uh, I think it was my SeaTac heat that I got. A little bit into the bushes, but you should have an out from there. Yeah. <laughs> I love her looks. <laughs> Oh, great shot. Good shot. Yep, easy out for you there. Oh no. That's a little bit too right, probably than what I you wanted. <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that one, to be honest. Oh, I have days like that. Where it I just keeps on going the wrong way. Yeah. And you're like, wait, what? Why are you going that way? I didn't throw you that way. <laughs> I threw you this way. <laughs> Looked like a little bit in, of an early release there for Shia. Nice tree stop. <laughs> Sometimes they put too much power in like a good tree. Like if it was, if it's a good tree, it just stops. Yeah, if it's, if it's a mean tree, it likes to just throw you into the bushes. <laughs> yeah. Nice putt there. Nice putt there as well from Shia. And then it looks like a drop in for Olivia, but I can't tell the distance from this angle. And I think it was a drop in. <laughs> I have to say, this is probably one of my favorite cards, just because how, like, laughative and talkative we were. That, that's another thing that just makes the round so much better, is when your card mates are relaxed and just having fun too. Especially Olivia, she's a person that's like super positive and super talkative on the card. So it's a really nice thing. Okay, real quick, hole 14 is a 350 foot par 3. Um, this is actually the hole I started the tournament on, both, th both rounds. A little bit of a left skip on you, but you should have a window to the basket from there. Oh, and it fought through. Nice. Was that you telling the disc to kick? Yeah. 
I think. <laughs> I heard Olivia. <laughs> I just heard a tiny little kick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's a roller from Shia. Look at this roller. That's so cool. It didn't go quite as far as she probably hoped it would, but it definitely got her out of the trees. <gasps> oh, I thought that was going in. I know, I was like super like... I was like super happy with that, and I was like, is it gonna go in or is it not? That would have been a birdie, wouldn't have it? Uh, yes. Have you ever had a birdie? On like any course? Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I was never had curious. an ace. <laughs> never had an ace. You will one day, I promise. I've almost gotten one on race nine. It just like hit the rim. Oh. Nice. I one. was like I, I was like I've never been so shocked in my life. Yeah. It will feel so much better when it's an actual ace. I've yeah, had... I can't imagine it going in, though. You can't? <laughs> or you can't. I, I don't know what I would, like, <laughs> I can't, like, I don't know what I would do if I just got it in. Uh, ooh! Early tree kick for Olivia there. Hole 15 is a 200 foot, 50 foot par 3. Um, it's just a slight little uphill, um, and you can kind of make out the basket down there. Um. Going, going back to the ace talks, I have, I only have three, and it's weird, um, because they're all island shots, and on every single island shot, it, I've just been trying to make the island, and somehow I put it in the basket, and I haven't replicated it ever again, so I'm like, it's really odd. <laughs> I'm like, I'm starting to wonder if anybody else has, like, a common, um, denominator on their aces, like, a common, like... Um, my dad has gotten an ace on hole 11 at Gaffney's. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did he throw it sidearm? Yeah, a sidearm. I think the best I've done on that hole is a birdie. I think me too. Oh, here's another roller. Gets her a nice clean put at the basket. This is Olivia's. I think four to put it near the basket for a put. This is your second, right? Yeah. Nice up. Uh, right under the basket. Nice putt. Oh, I thought that was going to go in. <laughs> I know. This basket is just being rude. There's no reason I shouldn't have been in. <laughs> and an easy par for you. That's probably one of my favorite holes on the course. Huh? That's probably one of my favorite holes on this course. Yeah. Perfect. Hole 15. Hole... 
Oh, 23. <laughs> uh, I totally was like, wait, we were just on hole 15. Um, hole 23 is a 491 foot par 4. <laughs> Silly Olivia. Uh, psychiness out there. This one is a fairly difficult one. Um, oh. She kind of pulled that to the right a lot. Uh, come back. She'll be fine. Olivia will be fine there. Um, this one's really hard in my books just because it's a. The fairway is a literal S. You have to go straight and then curve <laughs> to the right, or left, and then curve to the left, and then curve back to the right, like. <laughs> And plus, it's almost 500 feet, so it's kind of hard for Junior 15 in under. Yeah. It's hard for me. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's mostly hard for all of us. Yeah, I, I'm kind of curious how the pros play it. <clears throat> I always kind of wonder that on a hard hole. I wonder how pros would play this. Right? Although I will say this though, when you um, have watched some of the pro coverage of like something like the Beaver State Fling and then you win the lottery and you get to go play the Beaver State Fling and you get to the hole that um, Philo Albatross, it's kind of a surreal feeling. You're like, I can't believe I'm standing on a hole that, you know, I've seen on on YouTube. Yeah, that was crazy with me because some like I'm shy sometimes when it comes to like like pros that I've seen on like on my phone watching YouTube or on my computer. Like I think we went to the pro shop in Richstone and I saw Hannah, and I was too afraid to ask her for a photo because how shocked I was. <laughs> a little bit of, of a fangirl moment. Yeah. <laughs> but then I knew that I had to, like, say stuff and, like, talk to them more. That was a very good putt from Olivia. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you. It, it takes me a while to really open up to people, and it's not because I'm trying to be rude or anything. It's just I am a very quiet and reserved person. Oh, I sometimes I am. Sometimes I'm both. Like if I know the person and like I've seen them a couple times, I'm like I talk. But if I don't know them, it's my first time seeing the meeting them. I'm kind of quiet. Yeah. Yep, I'm the same way. Oh, nice putt. <laughs> Little <laughs> slight smile to the camera. Okay, hole 24 is a 422 foot par 3. Um. This one, you basically want to um, try to keep it as red as possible, um, just so you can have a window towards where the basket actually is. And that tree right there that Olivia just hit is very much a guardian to keep your disc from going right. <laughs> Yes, but I will say this about disc golf. Disc golf has um, really caused me to come out of my shell and um, really, oh, that's a heartbreaker. Um, it's just really caused me to come out of my shell and start meeting people and 
uh, actively talking and being a bit more boisterous with people. <laughs> uh, I'm very, uh, for me, I think it was a good sport for me. Um, I'm a very loud and talkative person. Um, so I talk a lot, but I know because of disc golf, I have to stay quiet and I have a quiet side of me too. So it kind of like fits, um, me. Also a little dad moment. Um, he was my caddy. He was probably one of the best caddies. Aww. I have to say. Dads are awesome like that. They they really you don't realize how much they actually give up for you until they do stuff like that. Where he's like, I'm just gonna caddy for Sierra. You know? Oh, I I get too tired holding my bag, so it's kinda nice for him to do it. And plus, if I caddy for myself, only on a card with these, I don't think I could go through the whole entire round. Yeah. Yeah, I can- I can definitely see that. There's times where I get done with a round and I'm like, my back. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll- I'll definitely realize, uh, when I have too much stuff in my bag, uh, when I go to pick it and I'm like, oh, I'm like, why is it so heavy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, hole 25 is a 305, yeah, 305 foot par 3. Uh, this is a tricky one because you want to try to stay in that gap in the trees as much as possible and you find the tiny nice. gap in the tree. <laughs> I think I always do. Always. I always <laughs> find the tiniest gap and I hit it. Nice. That's a really good throw from Olivia too. Let's if go. If you're like ever on my card, like sometimes I don't plan on it, it just happens. And like, it's like the tiniest little gap and it just goes through. Yeah, I, I have moments like that too. I'm like, how did it get through there? Like, uh, for instance, you know, whole five at Gaffney's? Yeah. There's been multiple times I made it through that tiny gap where all those trees are. And I'm like, wait, how? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's happened to me once. And I was like, how did it get through there? Like, there's so much, like, tiny trees and, like, big trees, so... Nice throw from Shia there. But see, the funny thing is, when you purposely try to throw through that gap, you can't do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just thought of that. I'm like, if I purposely tried to do it, I would never make it. Look at what the probability of it is. <laughs> There's gotta be some sort of math in there. Ah, oh, nice run at the basket. Uh, I thought that was in! <laughs> yeah, sometimes I wish I could rewind and then take my time and then I would made it in. Yeah, that, that's the crucial thing is like taking the right amount of time to where you know that you've got the putt, but not too much time to where you're overthinking it. Yeah, that happens to me sometimes. So I've learned to just do a couple times and then just put it in because if I think too long, it's just going to overcome me and then it's, then I'm not going to make it in. Yeah. So. You just have to think the right amount of time, and that's what I'm doing with my putting right now. So, I'm really confident on my putting, so... 
Nice putt there from Olivia. Yeah, that... Putting's gotta be one of the hardest part of the game. And I'm pretty sure a lot of pros will tell you that too. This the final hole? It is! Hole 26! 314 foot par 3. You catch it, you catch it. Okay. Like this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah, this hole is just straight down the middle. Um, a little bit... Dog leg left, but not a whole lot. And Olivia just wants to go play in the bushes. <laughs> you guys are probably wondering what my little handshake thing was. It's a, uh, it's an Australian YouTube family that I watch, and that's the thing that they do. So, so one person pound, goes to pound it, and another person just grabs it. Yeah, it's called catch me knuckles. Is what they do. Ah. <laughs> And you can see, uh, in the background behind Shia, <laughs> uh, the female, um, I believe this was, can't remember if I played FA2 or FA1 for this tournament. Um, but we caught up with you guys on this hole because we had just finished and it was pretty cool getting to see you guys finish up. Nice easy upshot from Shia. That looks like a magnet, right? Yes. Okay. I don't put with them anymore though. What did you switch to? A Jabuka Challenger XS. Nice putt. Nice par to finish out the round. Olivia will drop in her double bogey and Shire her, her double bogey as well to finish out the tournament. Okay, there you have it, folks. Uh... Sierra took the tournament at plus 24, Olivia Scott took second at 31, and Shia took third at plus 52. Thank you for joining us, and uh, we hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the coverage for the SeaTac Tree Smack 3. You guys have fun! Thank you to our sponsors, All Day Disc Golf and Grip.com.